Hello, my name is Ben. I'm a follower of Jesus. I wanted to say thank you to those of you that have watched the videos of this series. Um, my hope is that you have enjoyed and been blessed, been edified by them. I want to just especially thank my, I have one subscriber, my first subscriber, and my first video, one I posted three weeks ago, has had 60 views. So I'm slowly crawling into whatever full participation is in this medium. Merry Christmas. We are now in the Christmas season and it causes us to be reminded of the gift of Jesus. I have said Merry Christmas many times a day throughout the entire month of December. It is uh, something I enjoy doing and I believe blesses others. Um, Thank you. The title of this is Best Foot Forward. The best foot forward is the thing we put forward to impress and attract others. It is the thing we consider to be best and most attractive about ourselves. It is the thing we select to make most obvious when we'd like to make a positive impression. And so, it is things like your education, your nice teeth, your good hair, your best clothes, your social skills. Whatever you consider to be that thing that you consider your best trait and is generally going to make the best impression on others. Now, the reason I wanted to bring this up has to do, like so many other things in this series of messages, with the church. What does the church consider to be its best foot forward? Now, it could be what we consider to be our best trait, our most unique traits, and certainly it should have to do with the person of Jesus Christ. I think I would be fair to say that the first thing that we are met with when we visit a new church may or may not be Jesus, his presence, uh, his work. Often we are met with other things that are meant to impress us, meant to attract us, meant to draw us into whatever is occurring. A list of things that I think are common when you or I might visit a church and receive what their best foot forward may be. One, professionalism in sermon music and programs. Professionalism. That is nice suits, nice haircuts, saying all the right things. Two, ample amounts of competitive consumer services. That is the expectation that people that come to churches are expecting child care and multiple choices of places to bring your kids and classes to take and a sense that all those classes you might take in the community center you could take in the church and maybe take them for free and so on a purely forgive me capitalistic level that is direct competition, then we can be the Christian version of 
those things that you take at the Y, those things you take at the community center, those classes you take at the library. We want to be, we're, the message is we want to be the competitive Christian version of the same thing. At least that's the message that seems present to me. Third, friendly families. That is, we think, or the church thinks, that everyone's looking for a real friendly, warm environment, first and foremost, as a major trait. And so, if you are given a huge amount of friendly energy the minute you get through the door, clearly that's going to sway you toward returning next week and becoming a member. I'm reminded of some wisdom that was shared with me, a friend of mine who has studied marketing and has a degree in marketing, um, is the most knowledgeable person I know about marketing. In the church, when we make choices about our best foot forward, we are marketing. The church is not a business, it is the church. Well, not to be presented as a business, but nonetheless, you make a choice about the image and the brand and the best foot forward, and you are doing a form of marketing. Hopefully that's not controversial. I believe it was the first is one of the rules. There's 20-something immutable laws of marketing. And I believe it's the first. It could be the second. And it was very simply, don't be a competitive version of what someone else is already doing. Be the best version of yourself you can be. That is, present the things that are unique. Present the things that are different and specific about what you do, as opposed to being, we're the burger joint with the triangular burgers. Because I couldn't say the other shape. The other shape is specific to a, a brand, and I want to do that. And they're all the rest of them all circular. But it's the same product, slightly different shape. And so really, the differences are minute. And you're competing for the same thing, um, providing the same service to the same people. The church has uniqueness. And it has things that no other place has, no other entity, organism, organization has. So, these things I've listed, professionalism, competitive consumer, consumer, consumer services, and friendly families, can they be obtained in other places, or are they unique and endemic to the church? Are they its true best foot forward, or are they somebody's idea of the best foot forward? So, first of all, those services, can, those traits and services, can be obtained throughout the secular world. Throughout the secular world, you go to a business, and they'll give you professionalism, and they'll offer you lots of services. You go to the schools, they'll do the same thing. You go to, like, the Y, local community center, they've got tons of classes that are meant to get you engaged and attract your presence and your business. And you can join a club to get exposure to friendly people and a feeling of people wanting people in large groups being warm and friendly wanting you around. So those are not the unique traits of the church. Those are not the things that make it one of a kind. What then are the things that make it one of a kind? What is the church's best foot forward? The church's best foot forward is the presence of Jesus. If that is there, it will do far more than professionalism, services, or friendliness will ever do. And if it's not there, those three things cannot make up for it. 
I have a concern sometimes that, you know, bad meat can be covered up with good sauce, right? We know that. That's a common strategy for charging more for food that you wouldn't charge as much for. Is you take a not impressive piece of meat and you cover it with a very spicy or sugary or savory sauce and you present it as this is a delicious piece of meat. Is it possible that what goes on when the best foot forward of a given group of God's people is professionalism, services, friendliness, as the primary thing, as the best foot forward, that there is a doubt that the presence of Jesus is enough. That there is a fear that without competing with those secular services and secular availabilities, that evangelism won't work, that people won't stick around, that ministries will be ineffective, that churches will not have cohesion. So the question becomes, is Jesus attractive? Is Jesus spiritually magnetic? Is Jesus the center of the church? If he is the thing that we're offering, if he is the thing that is on display, and we believe that he is enough, do we need to send forth a barrage, church, a barrage of things that look like the secular world, the things that look like we want to make sure that you don't miss those things in the outside world because maybe if you notice it's not as flashy or entertaining, not as competitive for your entertainment dollar, then you might leave. However, I challenge and exhort if we believe the presence of Jesus is enough, can we scale down the sense that people that work in churches are very well-trained professionals and service providers? That the church is a place to get a bunch of needs met that we don't want people meeting at the community center or at the library. We want them coming and doing the classes at the church. A sense of desperation and friendliness that comes forward as a please. We're desperate for new people. Please like us. Jesus doesn't say, please like me, I'm so lonely. He is the most attractive, magnetic being in the universe. If we find him to be enough, shouldn't those that we attempt to reach hear that from us? Hope this has been a good exhortation. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.